I don't know, editing me will tell you differently. Uh, but that is to, you know, get us to take a <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy. The Factober's DVR. Show it a little bit. So it is yet again another month, which means another dip into the TBR basket. Um, if you are new to the channel, hello, welcome, thanks for joining us. I will leave linked above the first video that I did this year, my January TBR, where I go into the rules of this game. Uh, but basically it's my TBR game. I dipped into the basket. There are prompts. It's fun. But I'm excited to get into October. I don't have any readathons planned. Unlike September, which you guys would have seen if you watched that TBR game, as well as my uh, weekly reading vlog, it was a little crazy <laughs> how many books was on that TBR. I don't have any readathons taking place in October, thank goodness, um, except for maybe the sweater weather, sweat, that's hard to say, sweater weather readathon. I will leave an announcement video down below. There's three hosts of it, and I think I follow all of them, so like, I'll leave something down below. Um, but basically it's a week-long readathon that's kind of cozy and fallish, and I'm not quite sure when it falls in the month. Um, and I'm also not sure if I want to just participate in it. I haven't decided, you know? Um, so if I do, it'll be low-key. But besides that, if there's not really anything else that I have planned for the month, just kind of chillin' after the craziness that was September. Um, so let's take a look at last month's TBR as far as the TBR basket goes to see if I have any punishments. And then let's dive in and see how many of the fall books that I would like to read this month I can fit on this TBR. We'll see. Oh man, this is just not a fun stack. So here is a look at the books that I have or I had on my TBR last month. Uh, so we started off with The Roommate Whisk, which was an A to Z book, which was a random number generator, or a random letter generator, and I think the letter was R or something like that. We have a light cover, which is what I read, and then there were none. Four, we had um, a book that you bought secondhand, which was People We Meet on Vacation, a cozy read, which was How the King of Elfane Learned to Hate Stories, and then we had Author Random Letter, which I had a different book in, but I switched it out for another book by the same author, which was uh, Joanna Lindsay, and so I ended up reading Tender Rebel. Uh, then we had The Duchess Deal, which was a random shelf generator. <laughs> um, and then we had 13 Treasures, which was a book with something you liked to do in it. And then The Boys in the Boat, which was a parent pick. We got mom to pick that book. And I'm happy to say, I've read everything, everything on this TBR, which is the first in months, I want to say. I've read it all. It's all been read. So no punishments. I'm so excited. So with that being said, let's get into our first uh, pick of October. All right, pick number one. Let's go with this one, which is to read a standalone. So the first one was to read a standalone, which I feel like we've been getting a lot lately, but I'm not sure if we've gotten it too many times. To add one on. I think not. But the one that I have chosen for this one is actually a book that I like to read in the fall. It's on that fall TBR video that I made like a couple of weeks ago, and that is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This is a book that's basically Jane Eyre, this is right here on the cover, Jane Eyre meets Dexter, because uh, it is the story of Jane Eyre. It's kind of like a reimagining of Jane Eyre, um, which is a fantastic gothic book. Hated the writing, loved the story. But that's a different conversation for a different day. But this basically is that story. But if Jane was a serial killer, in some sense of the word, uh, but it is historically set just like the actual Jane Eyre is set. Um, so I'm really, I'm so curious to see what this actually is going to be. Uh, because it's just that idea sounds fascinating. Because like I said, I did not really particularly enjoy the writing of Jane Eyre. That's just, it wasn't for me, but I liked the story of Jane Eyre. It's definitely very gothic, perfect for this time of year, so I decided to give a reimagining of it a chance, and I am so excited. Kind of matches my, well, not really. I really wanted this to match. It does not, but I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read this. Pick number two. Oop, that one. 
research is to read a historical fiction. The next one is to read a historical fiction. So I'm going to be reading Halloween Party by Agatha Christie, which, you know, Halloween, Halloween's in October. It, it made sense, right? Uh, this is one of her Hercule Poirot books, which is basically just a collection of stories where the investigator or the inspector person who's solving the murder or the issue is named Hercule Poirot. It looks like there's a Halloween party and at said Halloween party something happens and someone ends up dead and Hercule Poirot comes in to figure out what's going on. I don't know if he was already at the party or he's been asked, like called in to come figure out what's going on, but I've loved what I've read by Agatha Christie. I read And Then There Were None last month, devoured that. So I'm really excited to continue with her murder mysteries. And this just, I mean, what other month was I going to read this in? It felt only appropriate. Pick number three. Here we go. Whoop. Oh, we're dropping everything. And it is two. Read a hyped book everyone is talking about. The next one is to read a hyped book or one that you have heard a ton about. And this one is one that I've heard a ton about, and it's also very hyped, but I was interested in it, minus all of the hype, I guess. Uh, and that is God and Monsters by Shelby Maharan. This is the third in her Serpent and Dove series. It just came out like a couple of months ago, I want to say. So it's relatively new, which is why it would have gotten all this hype. It's also the finale, the end of the trilogy. Uh, so I'm very excited to get into this one. I need to find a summary of the second book online somewhere because I've completely forgotten. I know something big happened at the end of that one, but it's been a full year since I read it and I, do, I don't know. But this basically follows these two people, Lou and Reed, and Lou is a witch and Reed is a witch hunter. And due to some events that happen in the first book, they end up forced to get married. And it's just the two of them and their adventure. Um, it's, I loved the first one. I did not particularly love the second one. I was debating on getting it, but I, you know, it just, I've, I've already committed to the first two. I might as well finish out and, and finish with this one. I'm also pretty sure I read somewhere, maybe, that this one is the one that the author is most proud of. So I'm interested to see where it ends. It's a chunker, for sure. But, um, yeah. I, I need to know the conclusion. Pick number four. Here we go. Oh, right. Read a humorous book or one you think will be. So the next one is a humorous book or a book that you think will be funny. And I'm going to doctor this a little bit to say the author's writing for this one is funny. Um, and that is this one by Tessa Dea. This one is the Wallflower Wager. I believe we've decided that this is the one that we're reading this month. I do a buddy read with a couple of my friends, Taylor and Brooke. I will leave their Instagrams down below. Um, of all of Tessa Dare's backlogged books. We've been having fun for the last couple of months, but I love Tessa Dare's writing style. She's very funny, very witty, and so that's my answer for this one, because like literally any Tessa Dare book would work. So this follows our main two main, main characters, which is Gabriel Duke and Lady Penelope Campin, and they are neighbors, and Penelope's obsessed obsessed with taking in lost creatures and soul and like she's got all of these ridiculous animals and her neighbor is done with these animals he wants her to get rid of them and she's like fine i'll get rid of them if you can find them safe in loving homes and he goes great i can do that um but then it starts to list some of the things on here and it says um how hard can it be to find homes for a few kittens and a two-legged dog and a foul-mouthed parrot and a goat and an otter and a hedgehog so she's got all these ridiculous not common pets, um, and I believe it's the two of them, you know, obviously falling in love with each other, but that just sounds fun. I like it, and I love Tessa Dare's writing style. She's always very funny to me, so that's my answer, because anything she writes is funny. Pick number five. Here we go. All right. Ooh, read a sci-fi. So the next one is to read a sci-fi, which in theory sounded super easy. I could definitely do that. In practice, in practicality, it was a lot harder. Um, I think as far as 
the genres I own, sci-fi is the smallest and the most I've read. <laughs> so there was not a whole lot to choose from, but I think I'm going to go with this one, which is The XY by Virginia Bergen, because it's on that list of books that I want to read by the end of the year. I don't know a whole lot about the plot, except for this takes place in a world where people with XY chromosomes do not exist. A virus wiped out the entire, mostly male population two generations ago and then our main character finds a guy on the side of the road and is like how are you here um so i don't really know it sounded interesting when i picked it up a couple of years ago it's got this really cool cover like i don't know that just looks really cool to me and i'm interested to see what we're getting into with this one it's been a it's been a while since i've read a ya sci-fi so let's Let's see what happens. Pick number six. Here we go. All right, and that is to read a book ending in an odd number. The next one is to read a book that ends with an odd number. So I'm gonna go with The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This one has I looked at it at one time and now I don't know. 313 pages. So perfect. It's also quite short, but it is a thriller. So this act takes place on an island, an Irish island, it says, and it's kind of been secluded and it's a wedding that takes place on this island. So this gives me some of the vibes of, and then there were none by Agatha Christie, where you've got a bunch of people on an island and they can't get off the island. There's not really any cell reception. Like they're kind of very secluded and then something happens. Um. And I think someone doesn't make it out alive, but you do follow, I think you follow five points of view, which is the bride, the plus one, the best man, the wedding planner, and the bridesmaid. I don't really know what I'm getting into, but it's definitely a thriller, which is perfect. And everything about this cover screams fall. Definitely one of the books I put off until this time of the year. So I'm excited to get into it. Pick number seven. Your book ending in an even number. Oh my god. So the next one is to read a book with an even number that ends in an even number. I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. Uh, so I'm gonna go with Spark by Alice Broadway. She is shiny. Um, this is the second and her, oh shoot, what's the series called? Skin Bones? Skin Books? Maybe? Uh, the first one was Ink. I read it last year. Actually, I think last October. Um, and it was great. I loved it. It's definitely got this dystopian mixed with a fairy tale feel. It was very bizarre, but I really liked it and it definitely ended on a cliffhanger. And so this is the second in the trilogy. I'd also like to get to, I don't know what I did with it. I'd also like to get to the third one, which is Scar at some point, but, um, we'll see if I can fit them both in this month. That would be great. But this one ends on page... 344 so definitely an even number it's also like pretty small and the font is relatively large so i think you can get through this the back here says there are always two sides to every story i don't even think there's anything that tells me what this is about uh but the first one takes place in this world where everyone gets tattoos to represent their life and then when you die your tattoos are turned into this book that's basically like a book of your life and if you are everyone someone comes to look at all the tattoos and if you are deemed a good person then your book is sent home with your family and you are remembered if you are deemed a bad person then your book is burned and you're forgotten and it follows this girl whose father dies at the beginning of the book and there's a tattoo on him that is reminiscent of not great things and so she's just trying to figure out what's going on so this is what happens after i have no idea where the story is going to go but i remember really enjoying it so that's my answer because this feels like a good fall good fall read and pick number eight uh here we go maybe there it comes read a book you put on pause all right the next one which um i'm pretty sure i've gotten three times within whatever the timeline i told myself was six months three months six months um and that is to read a book you put on pause i swear i've seen this one so many times um so i'm just gonna go ahead and give myself a punishment we'll put an extra pick at the end of the video um 
because I swear I've had this enough, but this is to, you know, read a book that you put on pause. So I am going to go with Frostheart by Jamie Littler. I am about halfway through. I'm on page 217. I started this at the end of August, and I had to put it on pause because of everything that I was trying to read in September, there was literally no room for this book. So I paused this not because I wasn't enjoying it. I paused it because of reading plans kind of got in the way. So I'd like to get back into it and finish this one. I picked this one up because Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin loves this series and was doing kind of like a read along for it where each month he had like a, a live show for it. And then the new one I think comes out next month, this month. Um, but I, I bought them so I could read them because he loves them. And I feel like if you know Gavin, like this is the book that comes to your brain. But this takes place in like a, a fantasy world. Um, it follows our main character, Ash, who is at this kind of like deserted village that is surrounded by these ridiculous creatures, dangerous creatures called Leviathans. And so they have this very special way of talking to each other. It's called like there's the singing aspect to it and he can do it. And he's asked not to do it because it's looked at as like a really bad thing. And then one day he does to like save people and they all get mad at him. And so eventually he goes on this journey because he's convinced his parents um, who left him many years ago are still alive. They left him to go on an adventure and he's convinced they're still alive. So he's going on this adventure on this boat called the Frostheart to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, and it's very fun. I love, I've loved it so far and I cannot wait to continue. So that is my answer because I put it on pause and uh, maybe, maybe the actual last pick, we'll see, <laughs> is this one, which is da, 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 to read the shortest book on your TBR. And the last book is to read the shortest book on your TBR. And there are lots of things that could count for this, but I think I'm going to go with one that I really want to read this month, and that is Fangs by Sarah Anderson. This is a really cute graphic novel, if I can open it. There we go. Um, that basically, oh, it just looks like so much fun. It is a vampire and a werewolf who fall for each other, basically. I've also heard really good things about how super cute this book is. So yeah, I'm going to read this at some point. I'm very excited about it. But it's super short, as you can see. So that's that's my answer, is thanks. And I do actually have one book, to, at least one book to add. There's many other books I'd like to read. Y'all know this. Um, but I need to add 13 Curses, which is by Michelle Harrison, to this list. This is the sequel to 13 Treasures, and I am buddy reading this with my lovely friend Teresa. We picked this trilogy up, so we'll read this one this month and then the finale next month. Um, I have no idea where we're gonna go with this one. But 13 Treasures is basically about a girl named Tanya who can see and communicate with fairies. And that is not a very common skill. And so because of things that happen at home, her mom sends her to spend the summer, at least a couple weeks in the summer with her grandmother. And while she's there, she discovers this photograph of a girl who went missing 50 years ago and kind of realizes a connection between her and her grandmother as well as her and like the state that this house that her grandmother is living in. And it's a very kind of like solving mysteries. If you like the Spider Chronicles, you would definitely like this. It definitely gives me the same vibes. I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see where the second one goes. It's thicker, which is a little concerning, but I'm excited because I really did enjoy that one. So this is it. This is a look at the books that I'd like to read in October. I've also got a few more reading plans. You might be seeing a secret secretive TBR video coming from me. We'll see. Um, this month. So that's even more on top of this. But this is what the TBR has dictated. And I'm, I'm very excited about it. I got a lot more of the books I want to read this fall on it than I thought I would. So I'm a happy human. But that is what I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video, or if you've got any reading plans yourself for October. Let me know what you're planning on reading. Do you have any spooky, spookier reads that you are holding off until the end of the year, or at least this portion of the year? Well, let me know. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links, so don't forget to check all of those out. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.